Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial and today we're going to be having a look at how to get displacement maps and normal maps out of ZBrush and uh, have them rendered with Render Man and we'll do it in Blender today. And um, I'm obviously here in ZBrush and I've got a high poly hand if you're interested in how to model a hand you can find out with Etika's tutorial on how to model a hand. Uh, it's done in Nomad, I did this one in ZBrush but I used a very similar workflow. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our model and we're just going to Z remesh this down to say 10,000 polys. It's currently at 900,000 so it's quite high. So we'll target 10k, um, we'll turn adapt off and we'll Z remesh it. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. Alright, so we're at about 9,500 and that looks like a pretty good amount of polygons. So for your normal maps, um, what you want to make sure of is that you have a high enough poly count to be able to get the rough topology of your mesh. If it's too low, then the normal maps will look like they're stretched a little bit and it won't quite work as well. Um, same thing for your displacement maps. If you go too low poly, um, while the displacement map will have a high enough density depending on what texture size you go to, um, if it's trying to stretch the polygons uh, too much, then you might notice some tearing in the mesh. So this should be fine for what I'm looking at and it is only 1% of what the original poly count was, so pretty good. So to start off with, uh, for RenderMan to render the displacement map correctly, we will first need to UV map it. So I'm just going to do that with the UV master. That's under your Z plugin. It's also here. I've got mine docked. So I'm going to go to UV master. I don't want symmetry and I want to unwrap. So we need to get all the high poly detail off our high hand. So what we're going to do is with both, poly, uh, with both sub tools visible, um, even with solo ones, this will work fine. We want to go to project, which is down here under the subtool palette, and we want to go to project all. So after we've done it the first time, we're going to hit control D and subdivide and then project all again. And the same thing again, control D, project all. And we'll do it one more time, control D, project all. And we've basically got our detail back. You can see there, switching between the two with solo one. That basically looks identical. Rule of thumb, try and get your um, low poly subdivided up to similar poly count to what your high poly was. So this was 900,000, this is 600,000, but you can see that the detail's back. I'm also going to rename the subtool to be hand low, and the geometry will go back down to the lower subdivision. We've UV mapped that. We need to set our preferences for our import export. So we want to make sure that under Vector Displacement Map, we set our Tangent Flip and Slip Switch to 43. This is specific to RenderMan. Different renderers will have a different requirement. Um, so whether that be Redshift or Arnold or, or Octane or something like that, they will probably require a different number. For RenderMan, it is 43. Uh, if it's not working on 43 for some reason, it may be 41. That's what it was previously, but in my testing, 43 has been fine in RenderMan 24. Also, before I export, I just want to make sure that I turn off this incredibly annoying two buttons here under the export uh, option for that subtool. So you may be able to do your normal and your vector displacement map from the Multimap exporter. Um, I've been having trouble with normals not going out correctly, so I'm going to do it the old fashioned way for the normals, but for the vector displacement map, uh, we want to go to Z plugin, vector displacement map, Z plugin's also here if you haven't got it docked like I do. We're going to set the map size to 2048, that's fine for this. And under your export options, we just want to make sure that all of those there are selected and your subdivisual, uh, subdiv level is set to 1, which is the lowest poly. We will also export mesh on, and we will go to mesh export options, quad, we don't want the groups, subdiv level 1, because we want to export the low poly version. Then we'll go to create all maps. And I'm just going to save here as an EXR so we get it in 32 bit, which you always want for displacement maps. So those two are exported. Now we're going to get the normal map, which we're going to do the old fashioned way just by going to normal map here. We're going to have it as a tangent, smooth UVs, smooth normals, create normal map. Then we're going to clone the normal map, which will take it up to the texture palette here. So that will be selected. We want to flip V because it's usually upside down. Um, if it's inverted, for some reason, once we open it in uh, 
Blender, we can flip it back over and we can export it and we will change this to be a TIFF, so it's 32 bits, so we get a good normals and this can be hand low and save that. Okay, so you should have your hand OBJ exported as well as the normal map and the displacement map. I'm just gonna rename that to have the suffix NM so I know which one is which. And we have Blender open here and we just wanna make sure that we're using Renderman obviously. Um, I've deleted the lights, so what I'm gonna do now is import a wavefront or OBJ. Navigate to our hand and import the OBJ. So there we go, there is our hand and you can see it all in its glorious low resolution, which is fine. Okay, so I've just locked the camera and I'm just gonna split the bottom here and switch to shader editor. And then we will go to the Renamend tab here and we will add in a Pixar render, a uh, Pixar rectangle light and rotate that into position. And we'll set the intensity to 100. That might be too intense, but we'll go with that for now. Then we'll select our mesh and we'll add a Pixar surface. So now when we render, which we can do right after we do a quick save, we will just IPR that in the render view. And I'm just gonna turn off the grid and the XY planes because I don't really wanna be looking at them. Run that IPR again. All right, so that's rendering. All right, so now let's bring in our uh, maps. The first thing we need to do with our mesh is make sure it's got a subdivision scheme. So we will add a subdivision surface. Viewport level can just be one and we'll set render to three. Make sure it's Catmull Clark because that's what it's expecting. And then for the normal map, we need to bring in hit tab, type in PXR normal. We'll get the normal map option here. Okay, so we just need to load the normal map in. With the open button there, we'll go to where the normal map is located, except, and we want to import the normal map into the bump input there. So result N goes into bump input of the Pixar surface node there. So if we run that IPR again, you'll start to get the normal and you can see we've got some issues because everything is backwards. So obviously I didn't want to flip out of ZBrush, so that's fine, we can fix that. Um, and if for some reason your map isn't loading, Pixar, uh, sorry, Renderman will create a dot, uh, dot .text version of your texture when you uh, do your first IPR. So make sure you switch to that and um, accept if it hasn't done it automatically. Um, so what we'll try first is inverting the bump and that might fix it. Not quite, flip Y, that's what I wanted. And if I don't have, yep. Yeah. So we just wanna invert and flip Y and that's done the trick. So you can see even without the displacement map there, we've gotten a lot of the detail of the hand back, um, but topologically, maybe not all the detail that we want. Though considering that this is a fairly low poly count mesh, uh, pr pretty decent. Okay, and to get our displacement to connect um, to the material node, um, I'm gonna do this a bit differently than just bringing in with tab because I found that it's not working for some reason. That might be a early release bug. So I'm just gonna go to select the Pixar surface and go to the material tab here and then scroll all the way down to the bottom till we get to displacement. Click on this drop down and click displace and you'll get a displacement node. So we're gonna kind of work into this with a PXR texture. And the texture that we want to open up is our displacement, which is our hand low VD. Accept that, and we're gonna run the RGB out into a PXR DISP, and you'll get a displacement transform. So we want to first run the result RGB into the vector displacement input, and then the result XYZ into the vector displacement input of the PXR displace node. And here you can enable or disable the displacement. Um, first thing we wanna do is change this to ZBrush vector, because that's what we use, tangent is correct. And just so it's clear, I'm going to disconnect the bump map for the moment and run the IPR so we can see that it is in fact displacing. So you can see that there we're getting that detail in the hand like so. 
So in an ideal situation, what you want to be doing is using a combination of a displacement map and a UV map. So your displacement map is for the heavy lifting of the displacement of the surface. So all your major forms should be being brought out by the displacement to give you that topological variation. And then your normal map is to give you finer detail in the surface of your mesh. So what I'll do to compare the two is I'm going to go to IPR and I'm going to save again. <laughs> I'm going to go to it and hit IPR. So what I'm going to show you here is the displacement, which is this which is including the normal map. And then I'll just show you the normal map and you can see that we lose all that topological detail. It's quite smooth there where we get all this detail back into the crevices of the hand uh, and some areas there and around this area as well. So you can see that sharpness is really brought back in the surface of the mesh by the normal map. So that is why we want to combine those two. The displacement by itself does actually a reasonably good job on this particular mesh. Uh, but that's not always going to be the case. So where possible, use a combination uh, if it is feasible and makes sense for your render. Uh, though obviously, bear in mind, every texture that you add into a render is going to increase a render time. So that's it for this tutorial. All the textures and the hand model will be available to patrons this month. So if you haven't already, make sure you're signed up for that. Link in the description. Thank you very much for watching. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.